Hey guys, it's Robin, and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between fructose and glucose. I'm sure most of us know that these are two types of sugars, and I'm sure we've all heard that limiting our sugar consumption is one of the best tweaks we can make to our diet. But today I'm going to go a little bit more in depth and talk about the difference between these two types of sugars, fructose and glucose. They're both monosaccharides, meaning that they are single sugar molecules, but they're both very different in how they're processed by our body. And that can actually have some serious implications for our health. So it's helpful for all of us to be aware just how much of these molecules we're consuming. Glucose is the most abundant sugar building block, and it is the primary source of energy for most animals. Fructose is a bit more rare and is found in fruits, honey, and in smaller quantities in vegetables. Sucrose, common table sugar, is actually a disaccharide and consists of one molecule of fructose and one molecule of glucose, so it's 50-50 glucose and fructose. High fructose corn syrup is actually modified to have higher ratio of fructose to glucose. This is not good for many reasons, which I will discuss in this video. So while glucose can be used by every cell in our body, fructose can only be processed by our liver. And in the liver, fructose is metabolized to glycogen. And again, glycogen is just how our body stores carbohydrates. If the glycogen stores in the liver are full, the fructose will be converted to triglycerides and stored as fat. Now, both glucose and fructose can ultimately be stored as fat. However, there was an interesting study at UC Davis that looked at two different groups, people who were either on a fructose sugar water diet or a glucose sugar water diet. And though these groups both gained the same amount of weight in the study, the fructose group actually gained a much more dangerous type of fat, visceral fat meaning around their internal organs and their abdomen, they had higher levels of circulating triglycerides and much higher levels of the bad type of cholesterol and a number of other biomarkers that are strongly linked to heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic disease, whereas the group that was drinking glucose sugar water gained their fat subcutaneously, which means more on the outside of their body under the skin, a much healthier type of fat. So that's a really interesting difference between glucose and fructose. Um, another interesting thing about these two molecules is that glucose is readily sensed by our body. It immediately goes into the bloodstream, insulin is secreted, there's a whole response to taking care of glucose. It will also mean that there is a secretion of leptin, our satiety hormone. So healthy individuals who are eating glucose will then start to feel satiated and no longer hungry. Whereas fructose is not as readily sensed by the body, probably because it's not the primary source of carbohydrate fuel. But that also means our body is not appropriately sensing that we've eaten sugar. So there's also not the same secretion of satiety hormones that glucose causes, which means we won't get the same satiated feeling that we will if we're eating glucose. So without getting too carried away in all the biochemical details, uh, fructose consumption as opposed to glucose consumption is linked to the accumulation of the bad type of fat and it also doesn't signal the same satiety hormone that glucose does. With all of this said, um, I'd like to now talk about what that means for our dietary choices. Obviously eating a piece of fruit is not the same as drinking a soft drink full of high fructose corn syrup. A soft drink has so much more fructose, probably 10 times as much. That said, the literature does suggest that it's a good idea to be conscious of how much fructose we are eating, and it might be a good idea when eating fruit to choose fruits that are lower in fructose. Fruits that have less than two grams of fructose per serving include apricots, cantaloupes, raspberries, plums, peaches, nectarines, blackberries, grapefruits, pineapples, and strawberries. But again, everything in moderation. Enjoy all of your fruits if you like them. Just some food for thought, some sugar for thought. <laughs> Even though fructose itself might not make us feel full, if we're consuming our fruit with protein, fiber, and fat, and water. All the things that help bring down the glycemic impact will be sure to feel satiated at the right moments. I hope this video gives you enough of a biochemical basis to ignore the juicing and especially fruit juicing cleanses 
and any sort of fads that involves large amounts of fructose consumption. The literature says fruit juices are not healthy for us. There are so many other ways to take care of our bodies in balanced and nourishing ways. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you guys next time.